explosive day in the YSL racketeering trial at the Fulton County Courthouse. In the past two hours, the presiding judge held young thugs attorney Brian Steele in contempt. Cameras were rolling as attorney Steele removed his jacket and got placed in custody. Shortly after lunch, Steele approached the bench where he told Chief Superior Court Judge Earl Glanville that he learned about a conversation between the judge, prosecutors and witnesses, and Kenneth Copeland. When the judge asked him how he learned about the conversation, Steele refused to answer. Before storming out of the courtroom, the judge told Steele he had five minutes to change his mind or be held in contempt. When the judge returned, Steele once again refused to reveal how he learned about what was discussed in the judge's private chambers. Sir, yeah. you're, you're straying off the issue. I'm not. I'm, the, I'm issue is, the issue is, how did you... Who... How did you get this information? I said, Judge, you, listen, and, and listen, I'll, I'll do whatever you want. Before Steele left the courtroom, several other defense attorneys demanded a mistrial. Judge Glanville denied all of those motions. In the past half hour, Judge Glanville has allowed Steele to return to the courthouse, but the judge has given him a 5 p.m. deadline to reveal his source, or he will remain in custody. What's good with it, y'all? It's called Beyond the Vid. Tapping back in, man, and y'all see what it is, man. This is, uh, you know, the clown show, the three ring circus, as I call it, and many others referenced in that way. I'm telling y'all, I said it first. Go look it up, man. But Brian Steele, Young Thug's attorney, y'all heard him before. He said he will fight till every last drop of blood is left in his body to clear Thug's name, man. And if you recall... Uh, you see here, you know, this was a, a big win for him. It went to a superior court. And I was wondering with the superior court hearing his um, appeal on this, if there would be any motions where they would, he like look into anything uh, mistrial wise. You know what I mean? Because this is when we really started seeing like, yo, there's some real fluckery going on in this case, man. There's secret discussions going on. They're playing games with the, like the prosecutions playing games and it was all a mess, man. And Brian Steele, when Thugger first got locked up, there was like motions and stuff put in where they were trying to get Steele off the case, saying it was a conflict of interest. Like this dude is really in it with Thugger, man. And you see here this report. What does it say? Justice prevails. Uh, Brian Steele's contempt is reversed by the Supreme Court. Justice has prevailed. It was my absolute honor to work with this team of some of the finest lawyers in the country to represent one of our finest, Brian Steele. Hooray for justice. Hashtag YSL trial Thugger Daily. That's Ashley Merchant. And I don't know, man. Like, I can't believe this case is still going on. Because remember the timeline, right? Like I said, they've been trying hard numerous times to fluck with Brian Steele and he ain't backing down like him and Doug really uh, seem to have some kind of bond you know like he believes in his client of course he believes in that paper coming in too but he's determined to win this case but this was when Ish first got funny like these secret combos I demand you tell me who your source is he wouldn't he took it on the chin he appealed it he won like then the next judge this is what got the first judge recused then the next judge didn't ever even take the stand because one of their former um bailiffs was involved in the case sending love letters and contraband to a co-defendant on the ysl trial it's been like crazy you know then the third judge gets on and she off the rip is like yo this case is a mess we gotta start uh, you know getting things running more smoothly this is a joke and then we saw recently where she scolded the one prosecutor basically saying yo you're playing games you run some bull ish like what is this we're not gonna stand for this and i keep feeling that the mistrial is on the horizon let me know what you think but it's clear they're playing games man you know again let me know what you think of the case so far you see all the corruption going on it's just a straight up joke someone commented that a while ago like this case is a joke but it's good that the corruption is being put out there on the forefront and then you got fanny willis sitting back in the cut just still acting like everything's okay you know what i mean like shit is a cold mess but i don't know i say free dugga and uh, I think the mistrial could still happen. Yo, this is lit here. 
but I don't know, like, is that I, like, it, it's dope, right? My spaghetti, Eminem, 52nd birthday, right? But, uh, you ever see, like, a cake like that? Like, it's, it's cool, but it's, like, it's gotta feel weird to eat, you know what I mean? Like, yo, uh, that's, that's white chocolate Parmesan cheese. That's, uh, what's it say? The eye-catching creation was baked by Austin pastry chef Hannah Brockett, who was approached directly by all pro and smokehouse chef Andy Nunson. Uh, Brockett crafted the cake to look like a tall plate of spaghetti topped with sauce, cheese, and plenty of meatballs. Like, I don't know, it just, it's kind of like crazy looking, right? Like, uh, what does it say? She used devil's food cake, peanut butter flavored buttercream icing, then strawberry sauce is the marinara, tro chocolate rice crispy balls is the meatballs, and then like I said, the white chocolate is the Parmesan cheese, and I don't know, it's just, y'all feel me? Like, it's like going to drink water and it tastes like Coca-Cola or something, like, you know what I mean? Y'all remember when they had that crystal clear Coke or was it Pepsi? I can't remember, but it's just kind of a bugged out. You know what I mean? Like, like yo, I mean the meatball, but it's it's rice crispy chocolate. I don't know. You know what I mean? Tap in if you ever ate some itch like that or whatever. But Eminem, 52 years old, still doing his thing, man. You flunk him with the, the latest album. That temporary video he dropped is a tearjerker, man. Like, cover that in another video. It's a conceptual album. He was very stern on letting everyone know that it's a concept project listen to it from beginning to end it's got to make sense and that song on the concept album is a conceptual song where he's like answering a question you know about a lot of people ask me am i afraid to die like it's it's a take from an old slim shady line you know what i mean but since he's on his marshall mathers the father and now grandfather he answers it in a total different way, you know, like that is a thing of the past. He's on his grown man-ish and he leaves Haley this song for when he's gone. You know what I mean? It's a concept from behind the grave. It's uh, pretty interesting. Let me know what you think of the cake. 52 years old, man, he's seen 50 cents that he's gonna be the coolest grandpa there ever was. That M never lost is cool, man. Like, I don't know. It's scary getting older, man. I'm scared to turn 40, y'all. But um, yeah, Shady's still doing it. The cake's looking crazy. Tap in. Every time I see you, you're getting smaller and smaller. What is the routine? It's called busting your ass, <laughs> being consistent in that gym, and being even more consistent with the diet. And I don't even like calling it diet. I, I, I prefer calling it lifestyle change. That's yeah, you gotta make some serious lifestyle changes. And, and for me, you know, I think the most important thing is being the cool guy and the hero to my children and being happy as hell and being healthy as hell. And it's a work in progress and it's still a work in progress, but it got to the point where I started to not look as cool to my kids and I started to hear about it. I didn't like how that felt. I loved it. And I saw that you were in Cleveland recently. Uh, this is coming off of obviously the heels of last year celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop. It's beautiful to see that, but we're also seeing a reckoning in hip hop and people that you've come up with in the New York hip hop scene. Just your thoughts on that and just the changes that are happening in the industry, especially when it comes to when we talk about Diddy and, you know, now seeing him um, going through what he's going through. I don't think that, number one, I think we need to stop doing a hip-hop scene. Like, the situation is not a hip-hop situation. And I also would like for everyone to be mindful of the, 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 the thirst and the urgency and the need to speak on the situation. I think a lot of times people don't realize how insensitive it could be to have opinions on things that have no understanding of outside of what you're being told and we do know that propaganda is a real thing and we also know that the truth is a real thing i like to wait for the truth before i you know really start to dive into trying to understand because i think 
Understanding is the absence of confusion. Understanding is the reflection of knowledge and wisdom. The truth is undisputed. I think that we kind of like confuse ourselves prematurely past judgment and we're not realizing how much we can directly and indirectly affect everyone involved with our unwarranted opinions. So with that being said, I'm going to reserve my opinions and I'm going to wish the best for everyone involved. And I think that we really should take away what I'm saying. The one thing that we should take away from what I'm saying is everybody probably needs to mind their damn business until the truth is undisputed. At that point, justice needs to be served accordingly for everyone involved. You know what I'm saying? And again, it's unfortunate because I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. And I'm talking about for the victims and I'm talking about for, for Denny. So, you know, I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to mind my business and hopefully everybody can find it in their hearts to keep their opinions to themselves and just know that every time you voice an opinion, you, you might be hurting somebody. Or, no, I'm, I really do appreciate the fact that you take the time to really formulate your thoughts and like you said, you try to get everything in before you make and formulate your own opinions as well. So. Yeah, I think, I think it's something that we're all really supposed to do, but a lot of times we're conditioned to not do what we're supposed to do. And that's even more so why we don't need to follow everything that we're seeing and hearing. Now, I don't dispute what I see. If I see something, ain't nothing to talk about. But I wasn't there for none of it. And I also think that for the people that were there, let's think about them first before you think about your own opinion. The prayers are for them all. Well, listen, you're going to have to tell me when you get that call from the Marvel Universe. Otherwise, I'll be hurt because I'm rooting for you. Thank you, Greg. I'm manifesting it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that greatly. Yo, this clip has everyone bugging a bit, myself included. Because listen, bust a bust to everyone's honest bumper you see about the Ozempic. They're like, yo, we can't believe nothing you're saying when you over here. Because earlier in the interview, you heard him talking about when he gets the call from Marvel, you see he's at, uh, he was at like a Venom premiere or whatever, but his word, he's uh, gonna do something, you know, uh, with Marvel, which is wild. We just saw Dane Dash talking about Diddy and how powerful he was and don't forget the agent one of the agents that that did the raid was saying listen from everything i've seen don't get it fluffed up diddy was uh in the same social circle he was rocking with weinstein and Epstein. it's crazy man and um then we see buster rhymes stepping up more into hollywood right but um listen i agree with uh what he's saying about this ain't a hip hop thing because that keeps happening where everyone's trying to put this on hip hop, but that's about where it stops. All this other ish, uh, people, the thirst and urgency, uh, you know, and understanding propaganda. Listen, people have seen a lot when it comes to this Diddy case. Okay, I'm not saying they've seen everything, but I'm led to believe this is a lot more than propaganda. And you see everyone theorizing like, yo, especially to y'all seen what that um, bodyguard said about Buster Rhymes, man. Like, I don't know. This uh, has everyone looking at Buster Rhyme all side eye. Like, yo, man, is you running with the Hollywood elite, taking Ozempic, faking the funk like you're working hard for that weight loss and um, really saying, yo, um, I feel bad for Diddy, basically. I'm paraphrasing, but um, I don't know, man. A lot of people are like, yo, Buster Rhymes, Hollywood sellout, he's compromised, and he's up in there. Pause. Like, I mean, up in there in the footage, or because you hear him like, I wasn't there. So I don't know. I don't know. It's just a very, very suspect answer, and it's got me thinking, man, Buster Rhymes, man, what the fuck is going on with you, you know? Uh, comment and let me know what y'all think. That's going to do it for this one. But watch, like, you see people saying, yo, boss, the feds is on you next, B. What happened to you, boss? I don't know. That was a, a very peculiar answer, in my opinion, because at the very least, as a, a great content cre creator that I've fluck with, that I've actually worked with and collab work with and done some editing before and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Got a lot of uh, respect for a great content creator he was saying yo like boss you're acting like 
this is just some old bullish like people saw that video that was kept under wraps all that time of Diddy savagely beating the brakes off of um, Cassie and you out here saying you feel bad for him and everything like you believe what you see didn't you see that you know I don't know man what do y'all think is Buster Rhymes running with Epstein Weinstein and Diddy I'm telling y'all, man, shit is spooky out here. Tap in, comment, subscribe. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Boss, did you sell out, man? Did you sell your soul?